The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy, Chapter 3, Habits, Continued. Find your fight. People are either motivated by something they want or something they don't want. Love is a powerfully motivating force, but so is hate. Contrary to social correctness, it can be good to hate. Hate disease, hate injustice, hate ignorance, hate complacency, and so on. Sometimes identifying an enemy lights your fire. Some of my greatest motivation, determination, and dogged persistence came when I had an enemy to fight. In history, the most transformational stories and political revolutions came about as a result of fighting an enemy. David had Goliath, America had the British, Luke had Darth Vader, Rocky had Apollo Creed, 20 somethings have the man. Rush Limbaugh has deliverance, Lance Armstrong has cancer, Apple has Microsoft, Microsoft has Apple. We could go on and on, but you get the point. Enemies give us a reason to stand tall with courage. Having to fight challenges, your skills, your character, and your resolve. It forces you to assess and exercise your talents and abilities. Without a motivating fight, we can become fat and lazy. We lose our strength and purpose. Some of my mentorship clients worry that their why power derives from less than noble goals. They feel guilty for wanting to prove the naysayers wrong or wanting to get back at the person who said they'd never amount to anything or beat the competition or finally one up a sibling who always dominated them. But really, it doesn't matter what the motivation is as long as it's legal and moral. You don't have to be motivated for great humanitarian reasons. What matters is that you feel motivated. Sometimes that motivation can help you use a powerfully negative emotion or experience to create an even more powerful and successful end. This is certainly true of one of history's most celebrated football coaches, Pete Carroll. When we featured Carroll in Success Magazine in September of 2008, he explained his early motivation like this. When I grew up, I was a little ding. I couldn't do much because I was just too small. It took me a couple of years to get in a place where I could be competitive. All that time I was living in the fact that I was much better and I needed to fight to prove it. I was frustrated because I knew I could be special. Carol's need to fight un ultimately brought out his greatness. Our March 2010 issue of Success Magazine featured an interview with an acclaimed actor, Anthony Hopkins. I was surprised to learn that his extraordinary talent and determination blossomed from anger. Hopkins admitted to being a horrible student, burdened with dyslexia and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder before such diagnosis existed. He was shackled with the label problem child. I was a source of worry for my parents, Hopkins revealed. I had no apparent future because schooling and education were important and I didn't seem to have the ability to grasp what was being taught to me. My cousins were all brilliant. I felt resentful and rejected by a whole society and was very depressed. Hopkins harnessed his anger. At first, it propelled him to fight to achieve success outside of academics or athletics. He discovered he had a glimmer of talent in acting. So he used his anger towards the belittling label he'd been given to fuel his commitment to the craft of acting. Today, Hopkins is considered one of the greatest actors alive. As a result of the fame and fortune he'd acquired, 
Hopkins has been able to help countless people in the fight to recover from substance abuse, in addition to supporting important environmental work. Though initially it wasn't, ground, it wasn't grounded in a noble cause, his fight was clearly worthwhile. We can all make powerful choices. We all can take back control by not blaming chance, fate, or anyone else for our outcomes. It's within our ability to cause everything to change rather than letting past hurtful experiences sap our energy and sabotage our success, we can use them to fuel positive constructive change. <laughs>